up for a bunch of skateboarders. Anyway, we're live here on Ustream, yay! Are we? And also, I am. I don't know about you. I am now. Alright, we're hey hey. We're going. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Alright. Hi. There's Being Eco, he's on the other stream with our page. And Freeman Sullivan, also the other stream on the page. So okay. Got, and then I'm going to same time. back away here because I want to... Yeah, get in the light. Nobody can see it. Anyways, uh, this is Freeman Sullivan. Glad you're here. Uh, you can uh, catch us on the site at activiststream.com. Uh, also, neogreenplanet.com uh, for embedded videos if you're not on Ustream. Uh, also, uh, you can check out Being Eco. Who's over there? He'll be live streaming today as well. Anyway, glad that you're joining us. We're down here for the Save City College of San Francisco rally here at Ram Plaza at uh, University. It's uh, all slated to start here in a minute. Looks like we got a pretty decent crowd out here of about maybe 100 folks. Uh, we're out here to Save City College from austerity cuts that uh, they're being made for the university. Uh, Basically, uh, the story here is that they're trying to privatize the university. Uh, this university, Hello, when I first moved here, this university used to be free. The demonstration will begin in five minutes, so anyone who's interested in being here, pile up in the front over here. Uh, you can get the festivities going. Uh, and we Back in 1981, when I first moved here, City College was free. All you had to pay for was your books. Uh, California used to have a really great community college system here where there was no tuition and anybody who uh, wanted to were able to uh, go to school and get an education. Not anymore. Uh, when Prop 13 back in 1979 uh, was passed, uh, that began the decline of the uh, community college system here in the state of California. So, uh, because people didn't want to pay their taxes. So, here in San Francisco, we passed Measure A back in the last general election. And now the university, uh, Proposition A was supposed to guarantee funding for City College. And when, in fact, no funds have been dispersed out of that, uh, the administration is crying that uh, they don't have enough money to pay the bills. So uh, get ready for the next wave of cuts, seems to be the message from the administration. So glad that you're watching. Uh, please retweet me. I'm at Freeman Sullivan. So, uh, and if you log on to the social stream, please let me know how visual is going on. Beautiful day out here on the campus of City College of like San Francisco. Hat, man. Thanks. So, and the rally is going to get ready to be uh, started here in a few minutes. Good to be out and about and live streaming again. And as you know, I've not been feeling well uh, the past month, but now I'm feeling good. And I'm up on my feet again, and that's where that's at. And it's, the problems here at City College are not unique among the, uh, colleges and universities around the United States. Uh, all over the country, under the false flag of austerity, uh, I'm trying to say that the government doesn't have enough money to pay for education. Uh, which we know that to be a lie. The government has more enough money, more than enough money to pay for services. Uh, they can build, right, if they can pay for prisons and the war machine, right, they can pay for things like education. Uh, the only problem is, is that when you pay for like education and health care, uh, the money doesn't go to Wall Street bankers. Uh, it goes to, uh, the normal people like you and I with 99%, and uh, the banksters don't get their cut. Uh, like at University of California, uh, a lot of the funding that they get when they they pass a bond or something like that, what they do is they get this thing called a credit default swap, which is a, uh, a fancy uh, way of saying that you can bet now on lower interest rates later, which... Uh, usually turns out to be a bad deal. Matter of fact, in just about every case, it turns out to be a bad deal for the college that's involved. Uh, as soon as the college gets involved with the Wall Street banker, it's all downhill from there. So, State College is the largest community college in the state of California with uh, over 85,000 students. 
So a loss to City College Services would be a real devastating impact on the city of San Francisco and uh, San Francisco County. So, uh, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Do you know about this movie coming up? Uh, no, 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 thank you, man. Uh, this is your anarchist live streamer. And uh, I have my, more than my fair share of the Revolutionary Communist Party back in the 80s. And uh, nice banner here. But yeah, that's old news. This is new news. We're on the live stream here. Uh, you can check us out at activiststream.com for more information or neogreenplanet.com. Or you can go to my Ustream channel, which is Freeman Sullivan. social stream and let me know uh, how the other individual is working out. Who is human being? Uh, he's a friend of mine. Okay. Is he the guy who was pushing around one time, kind of tall and slender, who wears dark clothes maybe? Okay, He's good. here right now. Okay. Live streaming. Okay. I just said uh, if you want to find out what's going on, you just talk to you. Okay. How's everybody doing? Yeah. How you guys doing? Yeah. Alright, so we're going to get started in a little bit. Um, my name is Chanel Williams. I'm president here at AS Ocean. How are you guys doing? I'm a full-time student. I'm Ender. I'm a full-time student at City College as well. So we're so happy to see everyone out here today. This is a really special day. Today is the last day that our administration is saying to us that we can have feedback on the show cause report, on the report that they're going to turn into the accreditation commission. So we thought that this is a perfect day to invite students out to say, what do we want to see from our administration? What do we want to see from our college right now? And take them our demands, as well as inform the student body about what's really going on. So what do you think about that, Ender? That sounds great. And the scene here looks great as well. I'm happy to see all these students, all these members of the community showing that this is a school for the community and the students and that we're going to have our voices heard. Yeah. This is a school for the community, right? Is this school for the community? Yeah. Who does school belong to? Who does this school belong to? The students? The oh, what's up? Hey, oh my God, I haven't seen her forever. I had to shout out. That's SF. I grew up in San Francisco, so City College has a really special place in my heart. I came here as a re-entry student, and I came back to major in urban studies. I want to transfer out. But where I came from, my community, it's very hard to get into school to pursue your educational goal. So that's what we want to protect, protect at this college. And we're afraid that some of these changes are going to squeeze out students that are disenfranchised, that are low income, that are working class folks. Because this is the largest working class 
largest institution in our nation, one of the largest in the nation, 85,000 students. At one point, City College of San Francisco had 110,000 students, 110,000. We were the largest. I still believe we are the largest community college in the nation at this point. So this is a serious thing, you guys. There are major changes that are happening at our school, and we deserve our voice to be heard. So we're going to kick it off with some chanting and to get the energy up and to talk about what we're going to do today. So who wants to help us lead a chant? A chant for the students to send some good energy for the fight that we have ahead? Because this is a hard fight. We are not alone in this. You got a chant? Yeah. All right, all right. Who else wants to come up and help lead the chant with us? Come on, come on up, Mondo. All right, don't be shy. Come on, the students, united, be defeated. Which one you got? All right, the students, united, will never be defeated. The students, united, will never be defeated. Antalo, Nambaran, Luna, Luma, Laban. That was in Tagalog. That's what's up, right? Tagalog. That's what's up. So let's keep it going. The students united will never be defeated. The students united will never be divided. <laughs> let's touch it up. The students united will never be divided. Estudiantes unidos jamás serán vencidos. Estudiantes unidos Very good. Put your hands together. Come on, let's get the energy up. It's sun shining out here. The sun is shining on us. It's been raining, but the sun came out for us because we have a journey that we're going on. We're going to protect our school, so let's bring the energy up. Put your hands together. Can you help me lead this, Carmen? Estudiantes unidos jamás serán vencidos. Estudiantes unidos y estudiantes unidos. Estudiantes unidos. The students united. The students united. I can hear you. I want Telma to hear you. Okay. Everybody, the students united. The students united. The students united. All right, so first speaker up, me and Ender are going to just put out some of what's happening, give some context to why we're here. So I'm going to have Ender start off and then we're going to go into our lineup of speakers. We have some folks that are going to be speaking today about the cuts that have happened to student services. And this is really important because in the state next year and throughout this year, there's going to be a squeezing out of students with some of these changes from the Student Success Act, the Student Success Initiative. So we're going to hear from folks from EOP, EOPS and from DSPS and we also have folks that work in the faculty that are faculty here at the college speaking. Yeah, so as you all know, the school is in this accreditation crisis. And as a result, the school has focused all of its attention into making changes that will appease the accreditation commission. Consequently, some of these changes include laying off part-time counselors and staff. And include, exactly, boo, yeah. It also involves, you know, cuts to student services, such as, you know, the computer lab not being open until 10 p.m., but closing down really early. It also harms, you know, library staff and, you know, your ability and accessibility to libraries. And also what this does, it hurts the communities. The communities who need education and need City College the most are being squeezed out. As Chanel stated earlier, two years ago when I first started going to City College, this school had 110,000 students. Now, there's about 85,000 students. Still the largest community college, but 25,000 students are no longer here. And where do you think those students come from? Where do you think those students live? So it's about the communities, and it's about empowering communities, because this is a pivotal time in just history in general. 
You know, this is happening all across the country, all across the world. Attacks to education, attacks to the teachers, to the students, and the people who work in the schools. And it's time that we raise our opinions and our voices and show the administration and the forces that be that we are still here, that we still have a voice, we have an education, and we're going to utilize that education in order to see a more promising tomorrow and so that our little cousins, our siblings, our children, grandchildren will be able to live in San Francisco or anywhere in the Bay Area, in the United States, whatever, without fearing that they won't get an education, that they won't get opportunities, that they won't be able to succeed in life. You know, that's not, that shouldn't be the case, and therefore, we're here today to fight for that. Because right now, it isn't between all of us, but the entire world is watching. What we do at City College and how the students organize here will inspire people all across the world to fight back against forces of austerity, privatization, and unilateral changes. I'm kind of short. Can you see me? Hi. So I want everyone to stop and look at the person next to you right now. I'm not joking. Look at them in the eye. Everyone here is very, very apathetic and angry, and we need to change the narrative today. The fear and the anger that we have been put in needs to be changed into passion, because we are beating heart of this school. Without us, nothing happens at this school. The student workers at this school, nothing happens without them. Hi, I'm Sharon Shatterly. <laughs> I'm a lower, I'm a lower class working citizen, student, student worker, and I was tested into E1 mathematics, English 93. I've been here for four years trying to make it to trig because I want to teach mathematics to people in E1. I'm tutoring right now. And I'm working beside many classified staff. I'm a person who knows what it's like if my superiors are fired. We student workers are not going to be the band-aids to fix this system. All right? You have rights as federal work-study students. You have rights as lab aides. Lab aides are, is not a promotion. It means that you are cheaper than the classified staff that you are being put in the place of. I want you to know that you have rights and you need to know that when the word strike happens, where you stand, get educated, and know where to go. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. She's speaking about the workers. The workers at our college, our classified staff that help support this school every day, help it to run. And that's the same for student workers. Did you know student workers don't get minimum wage at this college, right? Do you guys know that? They don't get minimum wage. Come on, this is San Francisco, so we want to change that. It's about justice for all of us, right? All right, so next on the mic. Who's next on the mic? Oh, Terrence, where's All right, we got Terrence Chauncey. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Terrence. So I'm just going to spend uh, a little bit talking about, uh, does everybody know what the uh, ACCJC is? They're the ones in charge of accrediting, uh, accrediting City College, and uh, they're the ones who put the college on show cause. And so I just want to say a few things to kind of uh, combat the image uh, that most people are seeing in the media. Um, there's a, you know, a lot going around saying that City College has been on sanction since like 2006 and the college can't get its act together, uh, that's wrong. In 2000, the, the, um, the college was not put on sanction in 2006. In 2006, it was given um, some recommendations. The next year in 2007, City College of San Francisco was one of 11 community colleges uh, named by the New York Times as a model of, the, of community colleges. In 2009, the, yeah. in 2009, the Accreditation Commission said, City College, you're doing a good job on progress on our recommendations. And then all of a sudden, in 2012, show cause why this college should stay open. From no sanction to the highest level of sanction below closure, like that. 
from 2003 to 2008. Okay, there are six uh, accreditation regions in this country. The um, ACCJC is in charge of community colleges for California, Hawaii, and the uh, Pacific Islands. Uh, from 2003 to 2008, 89% of the sanctions uh, issued nationwide were by the ACCJC, which covers only two states. Uh, in that same year, 37% of California's community colleges were put on sanction. From 2011 to 2012, ACCJC still has 64% of the sanctions nationwide. And right currently, 25% of community colleges in the country, uh, in the state, are on sanction. Of course, we're not saying that City College is like the perfect community college. There's a lot of things that we can improve and there's a lot of things that we need to improve. But following the recommendations of, uh, of the ACCJC are not going to improve that. Um, uh, as um, you know, if you look into like the, the composition of the ACCJC and then um, a lot of the people in the Department of Education in charge of accreditation, they go back and forth between government and the for-profit college industry. The former head of community college accreditation for the Department of Education is now working for the largest for-profit uh, school company in the country. And so we're not saying that City College is perfect and that there's no room for improvement. We're saying that to fix this school, it's going to take the input of the students, the staff and faculty, and the community, not a commission who is interested in, you know, the next job you know, at University of Phoenix or whoever can offer them the biggest paycheck. They're not the ones who are gonna look out for the interest of this school and this community. We have to do it and so we have to say to the ACCJC that the job of fixing this school is ours and we're not gonna have you come and impose what you consider, you know, <laughs> great, so yeah. Miho, are you there? Our next speaker is uh, Miho Madden, a student who's walking around. Are you coming up, Michal? Uh, and the, while he's walking up, I just want to read you uh, real quick the demands. So today's action isn't just uh, we're protesting for the sake of protesting, but we have a solution as students for how we can save this school, and we have demands on the chancellor. So I'm just going to read you those demands. Everyone should get one of these sheets because this is what's going to actually save our school. Okay, students demand that the chan that chancellor Thelma Scott Skillman won. Call on the Board of Trustees to reverse all cuts to classes, services, staff, and faculty. Stop downsizing the mission of CCSF and promote equity. <laughs> Two, organize town hall forums at all campuses so that students can have their voices heard. What do you guys think about that? Three, make a public statement calling for Prop A funds to be used for education as voters intended. Call on City Hall to give CCSF a bridge loan until Prop A and Prop, 80, uh, Prop 30 funds become available. Four, this is the last demand on the Chancellor. Speak out against CCSF being put on show cause without prior sanction. Call on the Department of Education to take action to stop the ACCJC's misuse of the accreditation process. So. Today, we're going to be taking action around this. There's going to be a march. This is going to be a short rally. We're going to march, and then we're going to deliver our demands to the chancellor. So make sure not to go. It's going to be exciting. Here's Miha Madden. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right. We, as students, are here to make our voices heard. We love our college, and education is a civil, democratic, and human right. We will fight anybody. Who wants to take that away from us? Yeah. Right. So no, you've already heard of the nature of the Accreditation Commission from Terrence. This institution is undemocratic to the core. It responds to nobody but the moneyed interest that keeps it there. It is not elected. It is an undemocratic tool in which to oppose cuts at this campus. This is precisely why it is going to take a mass movement to save this school because we have to put pressure on the people who are responsible to San Francisco voters. Your San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee and the people who reside at this campus as well, Chancellor Scott Skillman, who sits in her office watching this school get smashed by a hostile takeover and does nothing about it. It takes a solid unified mass movement to stop the wave of privatization and bankrupting of our social services in this country. So the question is, how do we win such a fight? 
We know City College does not exist in a bubble. The threats we are facing are being pointed at every public school in the state, right? Union busting, privatization, and downsizing. Because of the mismanagement of so-called business leaders, we are all living in a debt-ridden society. And when the weapon of debt is used against the people in order to destroy social services, that is known as austerity. It is austerity that people are facing in Europe as social services are being destroyed. And it's austerity that students in Quebec faced. And it's austerity that students in Puerto Rico faced. And it's austerity in students that Chile faced. But those people stood up. And, oh, and Mexico too, yeah, see. Sí. That's right. That was huge. But they fought back and they built a movement. And the fact is, some of them even won all of their demands. Right? And we can do the same. We must do the same. And we will take our demands to the Chancellor. And we will take them into the streets. And we will take them all the way to City Hall if necessary on March 14th and force Ed Lee and the legislature to take a position, force them to relinquish the Proposition A funds that were stolen from this school, yes. that are being misused and abused, yes. and implement them to save the school and to stop the budget cuts, reverse the cuts even. Yeah. Money back. But it's gonna take unification of students, faculty, staff, and the broader community. And we've all got to work together on that. And if we put our heads to it, I believe we can save this school. Yeah. And we will. All right, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, our next speaker uh, is coming up to talk about DSPS. Hello, my name is Doug. I'm not a great talker, but I'm going to talk to you about how when I first came up here, they had the DSPS lab open to like nine o'clock at night. And you had personal tutors and all that. They'd have cut all them services. And now they cut close it at 2.30. And a lot of students that use the lab does not have, they're not even out of their class yet to be um, able to go use the services there. And we, we need those services restored yeah. Yeah. immediately. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sharon Ida, and I'm a student at City College of San Francisco with the DSP uh, department. And since we had this fall back cut, it has um, enabled me to finish some of my lessons, knowing that I have to turn in my lessons on time, and I'm not able with the hours of time cutting. It's tearing me up. I'm not able to even be push forward for my education. It's tearing down my education. It's cutting back. I am really suffering and everybody else is suffering for their education. I feel that they should not stop our education. Give us our hours for DSP, our regular classes, and let all our classes stand so we can continue up getting our education. We reach for a higher education goals here and we stand at City of College for a higher education and we will not stand for them cutting our classes or our faculty or our student, which we have to be pushed out and transferred to another school and start all over and lose all our credits of hard work. I've been working at City College for a couple semesters and I've been working hard not to lose anything that I've been working for to be pushed to another school who don't know me and I don't know the grounds. I don't know the faculty, I don't know the counselor, I don't know who the treasurer department is, I don't know nobody. So you forcing us out and then leaving us uneducated that way, it's gonna make it hard for us to survive for the future. So please help us keep our school open. Thank you so much for coming out here today, educating all of us about what's really going on at our school. Next we have the president of Gulf Street Campus. Hi, my name is Pamela Brown and I'm the pres uh, president of the uh, Gulf Street City College. And at this point, I am so upset because due to the fact of the budget cut, we done lost good teachers. Now they're talking and closing the school down completely. Okay? And I don't feel that it is totally fair due to this cut. I'm just so overly well about this, I'm choking. Okay? So we need to stand for our school. 
Let's not let them take it from us, wipe it from up under our feet. Let's stand strong, walk strong, speak strong, and demand our rights. Yeah. So beautifully put. So unfortunately, our representatives from EOPS were not able to be here today. That's extended opportunities, programs, and services. Who knows about EOPS? Raise your hand. EOPS, I'm an EOPS student. It's a really valuable program. And the CARE program, who knows about CARE? It helps um, parents that want to come back to school and Second Chance helps formerly incarcerated folks come back to school and transition in. So I'm going to read some facts about the cuts that have happened in these programs. So EOPS is a state-funded academic preparation program designed to help low-income, educationally disadvantaged, and non-traditional college students attain a higher education. EOPS offers the chance for success by providing a variety of services that support the achievement of educational and career goals. EOPS was founded in 1969 after the civil rights movement to respond to the need to provide access for historically underrepresented groups from low income and educationally disadvantaged backgrounds. That's so important, right? EOPS proactively serves formerly incarcerated students who have the most challenging barriers to their academic success. In 2009, EOPS state budget was cut by 40%. 40%! With the state making a promise to restore the budget, it has yet to happen. The cuts have resulted recently establishing an admissions wait list and selection criteria for admission into CCSF EOPS as the demand is greater than the available resources. So, so many students want to get in this program, but we can't get them in. The EOPS program went from having seven full-time counselors to having three full-time counselors currently. It's a shame, and all of our part-time counseling at this college has been cut, which is a shame too. Impacting Second Chance, as it has forced the program to serve less students who are educationally disadvantaged and low income who are formerly incarcerated. The Second Chance program does not have enough counselors to assist with addressing their unique personal needs and academic needs. So they don't have counselors to help these students to get through this process. It is not easy to come here and learn and navigate this system. So many students come to us and tell us, where do I go? How do I get into counseling? How do I get my financial aid? What classes should I take to get through to my major to transfer or to get a certificate program? So we do not have the counselors that are needed to serve the students. And we're going to be having all these demands placed on us to get out of here at a faster rate. If you're at 90 units, you're going to have to pay out-of-state tuition. You know, if you take two classes and you don't pass those classes, you can't take it again. So this is not fair. We don't have the support, but they're making all these demands on us as students. It's not right. So the book voucher has also been reduced from 325 to 150 I know for me, I'm a full-time student. My books are usually around $500 to get all the books I need to go through my classes. So that's ridiculous. And I, you know, I have to combine my vouchers. I'm also a Guardian Scholar student. So recently, EOPS was forced to reduce its tutorial services as a result of dwindling budget. So there's not enough tutors. Like Sharon, who was up here earlier, she's a tutor. Terrence is a tutor. These folks are on the front lines seeing how all these changes are affecting all of us as students. We know what's happening. So in, in ending, the state must restore the EOPS budget to continue to serve its mission of ensuring that colleges are meeting the needs of those communities who encounter barriers to education. So that's why we're here today. This is about equity, folks. This is about all of us as students having a right to our education, having the resources that we need to be able to get through school and have a chance to not, to be able to excel in our world and in a society and have a future. This is our future. So I'm so glad to see everyone out here today and I hope you guys are learning a lot. Thank you. Okay. We just have uh, a few more, it's gonna be, I believe just one more speaker before we uh, start our march. But this is really important because uh, everybody right now, we need everyone here to become an organizer to save our school, right? This just begins here today, so we need everyone to get involved. One way you can do that, the easiest way to stay in touch with the Save CCSF Coalition is by uh, following us on Twitter, which you can do really easily right as we speak. You, I'm going to send, uh, tell you what you just send a text right now. If you take out your phone, if everyone takes out a phone, it'll take you half a second. That way you'll know when upcoming actions and meetings are. So please take out your cell phone, it'll take one second. Yeah. Um, you send the following text. You send follow, save, C that's one word, follow. Next word, save CCSF now. So that you send follow, one word, next word, save CCSF now to 40404. And that way you're going to get updates 
uh, for how to stay involved. So thanks for that. Our next speaker is Tariq Farrar from the uh, African American Studies Department. Hi. Um, so I was asked to speak today, and I was trying to figure out what to talk about. I teach courses in African American history, also African history, so what came to mind was um, trying to stress the importance of the role that you play as youth. And if you remember the Civil Rights Movement, and I'm not talking about what you see in that Hollywood sanitized version in the movies where you know the FBI are the good guys you know where uh, you know in Washington everyone's on the side of civil rights when you know the real story then you know that the vanguard of that movement was youth the foot soldiers of that movement the people who were responsible for making change day in day out were youth. They were organized in a lot of different ways, but primarily in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Day in, day out, they faced injustice. Day in, day out, they risked their lives, and some of them lost their lives in order to change the world. This struggle is a struggle, and I'm not talking about simply what's happening here. It's easy enough, and in fact, those who want to kind of deflect and, and um, uh, trivialize what's going on here, make it an issue of just budgets and, you know, greedy teachers and, you know, recalcitrant this and that. People want to do that. They make it simply an issue of CCSF. This is a national issue. It's a worldwide issue. As I heard Michal speaking earlier, what's happening in, in, in Europe, what's happening in Chile, what's happening in, in Puerto Rico, that's the same struggle that's being waged here. And the significance of CCSF in this struggle is that CCFS is the largest public institution, largest community college in the country. It has the reputation among faculty and others across the state and across the country as being organized in the most democratic principles of any, any community college. And if they can bring down CCSF, then they can do it anywhere and they can do it everywhere. And then you have to ask, what kind of education will you receive? What kind of education will your children receive? And what it is that they're trying to turn this, what they're trying to make this into. So the struggle here is, it, it, is, a, it is of essential, it's, it's as important a struggle as it could be. Your role is a historic role because this struggle is a historic struggle. Those are, there, there are those who talk about the dangers involved. You know, the, the, the faculty have various blogs that they kind of, you know, go back and forth on. And, you know, those who rightfully are feeling, you know, fear, worry, talk about the danger involved in what we're doing or the danger that we might lose accreditation. And that danger is real. It's not imaginary. But there's a basic question that we have to ask. And it boils down to this basic question, is what is happening here just or unjust? If it's just, then we support it. And we don't play games. We support it clearly, without equivocation, you know, and, we, and, 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 and stand our ground. If what's happening is unjust here, there's only one option, and that's to fight. And there's danger. There's danger. But you see, it's the... There's no courage if there's no danger, right? There's no struggle if there's no resistance. There's no struggle if there's no danger. I mean, if, you know, if there's no danger, it's like asking, you know, going in and demanding a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's not a struggle. But when you face the powers that be, and when they seem to be arrayed in such numbers against us, you know, and we stand anyway, that's what struggle is. And that's what courage is. And so I commend especially the courage of, of these, these students that I know. I mean, I know Michal from my classroom. I've seen Janelle day after day, week after week, um, Eric. I mean, I, I commend that courage and the courage of all of you. And I just, just, keep, just, just keep on struggling. And, you know, g g give an old man like me some hope. OK, so um, OK, so bye. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you so much for such beautiful wise words for this journey so next we have our last speaker oscar come on up here Woo! <clears throat> how's everybody doing yeah. so i want to give it up to everybody that came out here and i know you guys could be doing something else with your time but you guys took the time to come here to invest not only your time, but your minds, knowledge and feedback on what we're all struggling. And as the professor before me spoke and said that we are in struggles. And life is going to be like that until we die. Then we'll be able to rest in peace. But what I want to talk about today, a few things, is prisons and schools, which are important to you. I can't hear you. Oh! All right. What would you like to see in the future for you or our next generation? To witness more successful people graduating, receiving degrees, or simply being locked up, who are becoming mentally ill from incarceration, and this country being in more debt than ever? Okay. <laughs> Yes, we want education, not incarceration, right? Yeah. All right, so real quick, how much money is going to prisons and schools? According to California Common Sense Research Group states that California is spending 1,370% more than on prisons today compared to 1980. Boo. California spends $592 million on corrections in 1980. That spending has jumped to $9.2 billion in 2011. And so salaries for faculties and schools have decreased 13%. At the same time, prison guard salaries have reached a record high. And the average salary is somewhere anywhere to 100000 if not more, for a correctional officer. A professor who teaches just a basic lecture class receives about $45,000, $46,000 a year. Booze! So professors are making less than correctional officers. And so we're seeing that our schools and prisons are in competition with each other and many schools are being shut down right now and many prisons are being built and so we're getting frustrated when we see that and that's why a lot of our classes are being cut down a lot of people who want to get a degree it takes them longer you know because either the class is not being offered or the class is just simply just overcrowded and so that takes many of you guys even longer to graduate and transfer so that's something just to think about, right? And those are some of the demands that we want. Also, if we can help out our prison system, it will be through education. Yeah. Yeah. By educating our people, they will have access to education and would definitely prevent people being incarcerated. And as I want to, we want to look at our society, which way is it heading? Is spending more money on keeping prison systems going instead of educating our citizens. And today more youth are spending time locked up instead of being in front of a desk. This is happening now, and the age range of people incarcerated are the ages between 20 and 24. That is a common age for a person to be in college, not in prison. And so our valuable tax dollars are being spent on this prison system. And it's also putting this country in our state in more debt. And so, I wanted to give a real brief. I came, I was born and raised here in San Francisco. Love this city, love the weather, love the people. Born and raised also in the Mission District, where it's been real tough. And for me growing up here, I was exposed to gangs and I sold drugs before. Because I didn't have no other way of this being taught to me as a young age and being influenced of the people in my environment as they say you are a product of your environment and that's what I was and our environments in, in our neighborhoods here in San Francisco and all across the nation globe it's 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 not positive there's no hope and people keep in, imprisoning us and so I began to get into this lifestyle and it wasn't until I first came to City College, I began to turn my life around. Yeah. This school helped me. Yeah. 
This school educated me. And I love the professors for that. And so I love coming to school now because I always say a person who is not educated, they're in a state of ignorance. And through education, you'll be able to expand and open your mind and understand that education is power and it's knowledge. And so that's why these politicians are afraid of that. They don't want us to be educated because then we'll be occupying their damn offices and also going up in their damn their offices and taking their damn positions. While they're taking their nice, beautiful trips and flights with our money. So we want to take our money back in control. So that's why I want to rally up up here, get the energy flowing, and continue to fight for a good cause. But understand what you're fighting for. Understand that and educate yourself to that. Read those reports. Read what's going on with the accreditation. Don't go by what I'm telling you or what they're all telling you. You need to read it for yourself and educate yourself. So when you go to in front of these people next week, you know what the hell you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I want to say that in the end um, next week, we have a Black History Month event. I hope to see all you guys come through at the Diego Revere Theater from 2 to 5. We're going to talk about different knowledge of Tumbuktu, of the nation of Islam, and Africa's presence before Christopher Columbus. This is also knowledge that we want to educate. So it kind of, you know, level down the stress. You know what I'm saying? We also want to uh, have a nice, you know, peaceful week. So next week, Tuesday, 2 to 5. But on, the, on that note, I don't want to end it on a nice, soft note. just want to rally you guys up, energize you guys yourself. What do we want? And we want it now. No. Let's do that. Thank you so much, Oscar. All right. So just to let you guys know about the program, we are going to march the Fila Loop. Come back around, come back down, and we're going to have a speak out over here where we will then proceed into bringing the chancellor our demands. I was informed that the chancellor isn't here. What? Why not? I thought today was the day that we have our participatory governance meeting. We bring our, our feedback. So I'm ashamed, right? Like, we, I was supposed to give my, my input and our input as students today. So we're still, we still want them to come, but it's all good. So we're going to march around the feeling loop. We're going to come back down, and then we're going to have a speak out. And then we have um, some announcements. So um, next week, we have our next student organizing meeting. It's going to be in the Student Union Upper Lounge at 4.30, February 27th. So please Please join us for that. March 14th, which you see all the flyers here, is for the big rally at City Hall. Um, it's going to be 12 p.m. press conference, 4 p.m. rally. And last but not least, this week, the teachers are having their action. It's going to be February 28th, and you want to meet 5 o'clock for the human billboard at City College on Ocean, but in front of the Wellness Center, and then 6 p.m. for the press rally. So we're going to get the uh, march going. Please join us and come and stay around for the speak out so we can hear from you guys. Thank you. What? I'll be back in about 10 minutes. It's not going to be very long. You leave? No, no, I'm going to stick around. Yeah. Oh, you got to run? I'm supposed to be in class already. Hey. Well, you're going to plunk out anyway. I didn't get the Really? Anyway, glad you're watching here. I'm not going to go on the march here, but I'm going to wait around. And I will be present here for the speak out. This is Freeman Sullivan, your intrepid live streamer. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Freeman Sullivan. Please log on to the social stream or the chat if you've got any well, questions. We two live streams. We want to give a shout out to anybody that's here. I'll be more than happy to do that for you. I'm streaming. What I did uh, also, I check out one of my websites, activiststream.com. Just got that up the other day. I'm working out some of the kinks and bugs. But it is up there, and uh, I will have it open for registration really soon. So you can log, uh, log on and you can have your own account there. Yeah, what'll happen um, is once it's done, it should be you know, a nice crowd out here today. I guess of about 100, 150 people. Which, uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Right. I mean, it should, it should be okay. And, like, again, it's a matter of how many people are willing to cover it. You know, so, like, today we've got two. We've got my friend Clark is here. Say hi. Hi, how you doing? Clark, Clark is Freeman Sullivan from Activist Stream. And, uh, again, I'm being Eco from Neo Green Planet. So, Two of us are sort of doing that, and again, I'm a City College student. Hi, everybody on the internet, right? This is Nate. Nate's uh, on the media working group, and we're sharing this, right? Yeah, that's where we're putting it. Go 
Was it uh, savecsf.org? Or savecsfnow.org? Uh, savecsf.org is the website. There's a lot of links to like accreditation information and so forth, but there is not, um, the stream isn't embedded on their site. Well, no, no, it's just where you want to go there for more information. Yeah, that's where you want to go. For more. There's also a Facebook page that's up, uh, Save CCF. You can check that out on Facebook. By the way, have you seen Bob today? Yeah, he was here. Big CCS. Yeah, he was kind of looking for you. Was he? Well, where is he? Let me go. Let me I don't know. What he looks like. uh, he's an older gentleman. He's got gray hair. He's got a beard. Okay. Stocky. Uh, he looks like a carpenter, which is what he does for a living. Uh, we've now lost the protest. The protest is going that way. Yeah, they're just going to make a whoop. Yeah, uh, yeah they're going to make a whoop. They'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go tweet from in there. Are you are you gonna go in there and check it out and see what the deal is? Yeah. yeah so we've got word that there might be some kind of a little bit of civil disobedience at the moment. Which Clark, you should really go cover that too, man. If you civil can. disobedience at the, at the chancellor's office? Something like that. Not fairly. Yeah. Well, that's what she says. But then at three o'clock, we go. And we know for a fact at three o'clock she's got a meeting over there in the Rosenberg Library. So we want to kind of yeah catch her coming in. Do they have a? Uh, so the SFPD patrols this campus? Uh, or do they have a specific... So that's uh, kind of unusual to see them. It's usually City uh, College has their own... We'll wait till this gets more radical. All right, I'm going to go sit up in there. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care of it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I kind of want to go catch up with the protesters. Well, go ahead. I need to talk to someone who's here. That's why we have so dual, dual streams going there. For a second. Now, guys, again, if you want to watch both our streams, they're on at neogreenplanet.com. Or and activiststream.com. Uh, activist and if you want to comment, you can just uh, go to the Ustream sites and log in there and join in the social stream. Yeah, isn't that right? Yeah. Put, put comments up on the social stream and we'll get them right here. So we'll be able to respond and make this more interactive. Um, yeah, again, I'm going to just mute this for a second so I can go conversate with somebody. And I thought you're going to keep covering things? Yeah, I'm just basically going to sit here like a bump on a log. Right, he's going to sit here. Beautiful like day. A bump on a log. It's a beautiful day. Let's enjoy it. Enjoy the beautiful day out here. Students went up on a little march to the chancellor's office. Um, being mobility impaired, I decided to wait around. Oh, they will be back for a student speak out, which will be coming up in about 15 minutes or less. Anyway, glad you're watching. Uh, if you'd like more information about what I do, and where I'm at in the uh, interwebs, uh, you can go to activiststream.com and uh, add tips and information. Uh, the site is in beta stage right now, but I'll have it up and open for memberships within the next couple of days. As a matter of fact, I spent the last two days working on the site and uh, getting it together. I don't get a chance to come out to City College too often. Uh, it's on the opposite side of my world, but... I am a college student. When I was going to school back in the 70s, uh, it was a lot easier for students. Uh, number one, the tuition wasn't as crushing. Uh, I went to a private institution, uh, one of the uh, top colleges for uh, medicine on the East Coast, and uh, tuition when I started school was $3,750 a year, which that was considered to be really expensive at the time. Well, the same tuition at the college today, uh, 30 years later, 30, 33 years later, is $60,000 a year. So we went from $3,700 a year to $60,000 a year. That's almost a 2,000% increase. So I don't really envy a lot of students today trying to finance their education, which makes schools like City College of San Francisco all that much more important because this is a way for working class and poor kids to get a chance to go to school which is something that uh, everybody deserves a chance to be able to educate themselves. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, what walk of life that you're from, uh, you deserve an education. And it should be made available to you upon demand, just like medical services. Anything that enriches uh, people's lives should definitely take priority over things like prisons and other uh, institutions. So uh, there's my two cents worth. So if you have anybody, anything you'd like to ask, any questions, uh, just log on to the social stream, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, I'll be out here for the next half an hour to an hour uh, streaming, as long as I can. Uh, I'll be here for the speak out. 
um, and hear from some of the students that are actually attending the university here to talk about their situation, about what's going on with the campus. Uh, on my calendar of things, I will be covering the March 1st demonstration at City Hall of City College students. Uh, that's uh, scheduled for 12 noon for the rally, and then 4 p.m. they will be going into City Hall to do public comment at the Board of Supervisors meeting. So, uh, in this past general election, uh, San Francisco voters overwhelmingly passed Proposition A, which would guarantee up to, I guess, maybe $200 million a year to help uh, fund uh, City College here. And, uh, well, uh, none of the money's gotten to, this, to the university yet. Um, I know the taxes are, uh, the money's in the bank, and uh, it should uh, reach the students by at least July, I believe. Um, City College is having a problem with accreditation. As you heard the one speaker talking about, uh, I believe it was, uh, I want to say Molly. Uh, anyway, uh, he was talking about how uh, the school went from winning uh, awards, national awards, to now where they're facing an accreditation crisis, to where uh, the AAJC, uh, the American Association of Junior Colleges, has actually came out and stated that uh, the university is not meeting academic standards. Well, how does a university drop uh, in quality of education in three to four years uh, without like massive, massive budget cuts? Um, and the like. So it makes you wonder sometimes uh, exactly what the motivation is for the people that are running this university. Personally, I believe uh, they're part of the same problem as uh, the people that are at the banks. I, I firmly believe they're almost the exact same people, uh, the people that are running the banks and corporations, uh, because they have a vested interest of increasing their share of the economic pie. And when they can take money away from schools, and put it in for-profit institutions like, believe it or not, prisons, well then, uh, they're gonna do that because you know, this university here is not operating for a profit. It is a public institution. So, uh, maybe uh, that's uh, an idea of why uh, these things are occurring here. So there are larger forces at work, especially here in the United States. And as we all know, austerity is not the way to go uh, because basically you have to make corporations pay their fair share of taxes, which is something they don't want to do. Uh, for instance, like Twitter. Uh, when they moved their corporate headquarters to Ninth and Market, they wanted a special tax break for moving in there. And uh, you know, we have to stop doing this for corporations. Communities and municipalities around the country, citizens around the country need to stand up to these corporations and say no more tax breaks, no more free handouts, because the cost of these institutions are borne by the private citizen and not by public corporations. And public public corporations are making record profits. Every year they make more and more money. The more and more money goes from the 99% and gets transferred to the 1%. And which you don't, they don't need the money. Come on, what is their interest? Their interest basically, I believe, to be greed. Uh, because money is, the pursuit of money is an illness, a psychiatric illness, I believe. Because once you have more money than you need, uh, how much How much is too much? How big of a house can you live in? You know, when you have 225 people in the United States, in the world, that actually control more wealth than 4 billion people, well then you know you have widespread economic disparity in the world today and something's got to be done about it this is basically what i believe to be the root of all problems with human society is that we have a gross inequality of uh, wealth uh, we have gross inequality of educational systems gross inequality of medical and health care systems um, it's all these different things that you, you know when, you, when you're poor or middle class it's like you have to struggle a lot harder to get somewhere in the world so, anyway, that's uh, two more cents. Uh, put it all together, uh, you might have some pennies to rub together. Um, thanks for watching, by the way. I um, just noticed I got a little uptick in viewers here. Uh, you're a little late. Uh, you missed the speakers. They just 
got done speaking. Uh, this is the City College of San Francisco uh, student rally. Uh, we'll be back on March 1st at City Hall to uh, speak at the Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, that'll begin at 2 p.m. on March 1st, and I will be out there live streaming. Uh, at any rate. I thought it was March 1st. Maybe I'm wrong in the day. Maybe you it is that? March 1st. And I'll oh, get another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I did get up the wrong It day. might be two things. But maybe, maybe it's uh, okay. Well, because uh, they were just talking about March 1st. Yeah. But, well, you know, it makes sense. We have a rally after the city. After the board of supervisors meet, you know. That's how they used to do it in Georgia. They'd have the discussion afterwards, after the decision. Yeah. Uh, well, too, too little, too late. Yeah. All right, well, nice talking to you. All righty, well, I think I'm going to wrap, wrap it up here because they just took, took away the PA system, so if there is going to be a speak out, um, it's not going to be over the PA, and we'll, we'll have a hard time hearing it. So I think I am going to sign off at this point. Let me hide out there. Uh, Freeman Sullivan. Uh, if you follow me on Ustream.tv, um, and I do live stream uh, at least two to three times a week. So uh, if you want to catch up on the latest and uh, what's happening here in San Francisco Bay Area, I'm your guy. And also, you might want to follow Being Eco, B E E I N G E C O. Oh, wait, 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 here we go. Um, we have the students coming back. Uh, they just went on a circle around campus. Uh, this is a pretty hilly campus. It's one of the reasons I didn't follow the march. I'm fine, thank you. Stupid rumble pads. Oh yeah, I'm good.
So we're making our way over here to come on the hall to the Chancellor's office. Where a list of demands are going to went around that way, but oh well. around to the side here and see if I can get in a better view. So just bear with me for a second.
how this school has uh, affected you, right? You don't need to have necessarily the big picture analysis. You don't need to put forward and stuff like that. If you don't want to, you can just say how you feel about the school and why you want to save it.
on Saturday is my last semester here because I've been here for quite some time. <laughs> City College has been my micro world for quite some time. And I see on the mission statement to get back to it, they've, 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 they've taken out, I got a thing. Cultural enrichment, what does that mean? That means it doesn't mean critical thinking, I mean. Does it mean art, music, and whatever it is they want it to be? No, I believe it does. Cultural enrichment. If you take out cultural enrichment, what happens? I guess you have got being trained to be on the lower level of a, uh, of a ladder that takes us right to pretty much uh, nowhere. As, as, uh, as another tool in the system, the capital system. Is this what we want to say college to be? Another thing that they get out, which, uh, which involves me and a lot of folks who have come back from this lesson, single mom. People would like to learn some cultural enrichment, enrichment, maybe art, uh, maybe music, or maybe sculpture, maybe ceramics, maybe whatever. Music. Play the guitar and the piano, learning a way to become independent of this system, an independent autonomous human being, and find others who start a collective of community, and then it's found to become a free human being. So they call that lifelong learning. Is that, I hate to say it, folks, that's gone. So here we are, so we're up to it, so let's do that. Let's cast that wide net. Let's cast that wide net of our fellow human beings. Find the common thread which is brings us here. Life, life, love, life, flourish, of course. Don't panic, just keep it our gift. Don't panic, just keep it.
happening. Um, and uh, I want to make a couple of points. Um, the first one is that the interests of the students and the interests of the employees are the same at this school. There are, there are people who are trying to divide us, who are kidding as if the interests of students were separate from the interests of faculty and staff at, the, at this school. And that, could, that is totally false because Students need classes, programs, and services, and the employees of this school are happy to provide them. And so that's where, you know, the layoffs of employees is very detrimental to the interests of the students. Um, students need public education that is affordable and accessible and of high quality. The employees of this school are trying to provide that, and have provided that over a long period of time. You know, there are certainly grounds for improvement, as there are at any institution, and we need to work on that. We live in a society that's very classist, and it's very racist, and it's very sexist. I could go on. We, we have to address these things. We have to provide services and programs that enable students who come, who come from those, from, from situations that make it difficult for them to be successful in, in, in their, in what they want to learn here. We have to have these services, and that's why our interests are together. We don't want the, these cuts. We need childcare for students who have children. We need uh, counseling and financial aid and housing and jobs and adequately paying jobs that pay a fair wage to equity. students. Yeah. Equity. Uh, equity. We need equity. We yeah. need to have the services and, and that facilitate that help students be successful here. We don't believe that the administration is interested in that by judging the measures that they are taking. So um, I just want to salute you all and promote unity among the community. You know, we, we need the community, and the community needs City College. And the chancellor should be here to talk, to talk with us, or, their, or her representatives. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Hey guys. So I got a question. Who's the future? We are. I can't hear you. We are. So we need more resources, right? Right. And who's got the resources? So the talk is all to be right.
young people, people of color who are organizing and working to get workplace rights. We're on the cusp of becoming the second state of the union to win workers' protection for domestic workers after only the state of New York. Why do I bring this up? Because I think there's an aspect of what's going on here which is about union busting. It's about destroying the department chair council, defunding the diversity department. Yeah. That there's going to be nobody to counsel you. There'll be a white person running the African American Studies Department, a straight person running the LGBT studies, an anti-union person purporting to run labor and community studies. Our good organic dean, Fred Chavaria, coming up from the ring. Now he's the dean, he knows who we are, he knows our communities. They tell him, go away, we, we don't want you, you're too close to the teachers. It's really about getting jobs for, you know, we just sent out job announcements with three top positions in City College. You know what it says? It's desirable qualifications. You are a retired community college instructor. That means you're going to have your hundred, two hundred thousand dollars of your pension. You're going to come here get another couple hundred thousand dollars. You know, I don't know what Selma Scott Steelman is like as an individual, but she's making five hundred thousand dollars a year now, about off the public till her pension and what we're paying her. This guy Scotty Brown, who's the so-called special trustee who's running our board, no power through our elected board, he's making a thousand dollars a day. Every six days, that's enough money to fund another one of our classes. I'd be proud to be a person at City College. We've had good administrators. Our brilliant. Retired Chancellor Dr. Don Griffin came up with a half of his chest. Don came up, he born to an African American family of farm workers. He got his PhD, he came here to teach, he knew about the community. When Don said to me and others, tighten your belt, take your pay cut, I said, I'm willing to do that, Dr. Griffin, because you made all your administrators take the pay cut too. Now they're here and they're shoveling this money that the Measure A voters and the Prosperity voters gave us into their pockets, and that's wrong, that's a crime. So I want to say I agree with other speakers. We have to have a vision of a better society. That's what the labor movement in its best aspect is about, student worker unity. And it's this kind of action that I believe, I believe we began to win this fight on election night, when the voters voted for us. And yeah, you know, we feel that the police are under the pressure up here, but you know what? They're understaffed. I've worked with them. Our janitors are understaffed. Our cafeteria workers are understaffed. Our counselors are understaffed. If they 10 to 1 members. AFC 20, all of us. And if we're hurting, that means we're not here to help you. They don't want us to be here to work and be here full time for you. Bye bye. I can't be your club, uh, you know, advisor. I have to fly down the freeway to my next community college. That's what they. Want. That's the real target here. The part timers get good pay and health benefits. They want cheap, low wage part timers, and that means we can't be here for you. And that's one of the things we're fighting. So again, I want to salute your courage, and I want to just conclude uh, by. Echoing what the farm workers say out there in the fields doing that hard work, the Lord Suerta will say, Se puede, si se puede. Let's do it five times. Se puede, si se puede, 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 se puede, si se puede.
uh, the student loan, the emergency student loan program, Woo! for one thing, it doesn't work. The money doesn't, a lot of the money comes back delinquent. That needs to be cut. A lot of programs like that like, have to be cut. Uh, the teachers, these, these really bourgeoisie teachers who want all these extra perks, um, they're going to have to get rid of those these, because that could put City College in danger. And as City College goes, San Francisco goes. As San Francisco goes, so goes California. And as California goes, so goes the nation. This is one of the finest colleges in the United States of America. Keep it open and be real. Make the cuts that need to be made and don't and prepare for university while we're here. That's what the president wants to hear. So write the president, Feinstein, Boxer a letter and let them know that we're preparing to, to transfer from here to a university, a four year college. That's all I have to say. Keep yourselves positive and we're gonna win. We're gonna keep our accreditation. March 15th today, don't forget to celebrate and don't forget to do your homework. Thank you very much. No cuts. No cuts. The Ides of March. City College. What's up, guys? Right. So, yeah, this is it. We're here now. So, uh, what has come through, you know, is like upper class trying to impose on us and whatnot and take away, you know, pretty much one of the only two things we have left, which is this City College, you know. And it's no surprise that, you know, uh, a lot of the, uh, the, um, the, the upper class wants to take the first stab at the largest community college in California, if not the U.S. So,
this vision of a whole new world. If you're not, then okay, you can just sit right there. Um, so, that was awesome. So, I just want to address some of the questions people have. Anyway, uh, folks, the uh, batteries are getting low here, and uh, well, I have to—I I have, I have spare batteries, lots of them, but uh, it takes like about 10 minutes to reboot. So uh, I am going to uh, end this particular live stream, folks. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're at Conlin Hall here at City College of San Francisco. Uh, there is a sit-in going on right now that will continue until uh, the students get a chance to either meet the chancellor or somebody from the chancellor's office. So uh, do uh, stay with this channel a little bit later. If the chancellor does in fact show up, um, then uh, I'll start the stream back up. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, for more information, go to activiststream.com if you'd like to contact me at Freeman Sullivan or just Google me, Freeman Sullivan. Thanks a lot and everybody enjoy the rest of their day.